whole life I always knew I was special Even with no remainders I could always move a decimal Money on my mind while the girls that made un beso Hustlers in my blood and it's running through my vessels Just trying to clear the threshold Just trying to make a way In my race against time I could see an early grave School to prison pipeline 12 years a slave Suspension and detention is conditioned for a cage the next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros, a comments made by Eddie Hearn, where he gave his prediction for the sales of the fight between Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Let's take a listen at what Eddie Hearn had to say during the interview. All right, in this video appears courtesy of Boxing Social. You can check out Boxing Social for the latest in boxing news. And as you see, I'm about to subscribe. So let's take a listen to what Eddie Hearn had to say. Going back to the press conference, I saw a couple of interviews where Frank mentioned he thinks it could do one and a half million pay-per-view boys. Do you think that's realistic? Uh, no, not on BT. But I think it could do 800,000, 900. It could, it could touch it. I mean, it would do over a million on Sky. Um, it's a big fight. And, you know, I think... Um, I don't think everyone talks about him not turning up to the press conference. I mean, people sort of seem to forget that Tyson Fury didn't turn up to the Vladimir Klitschko press conference as well. It didn't hurt the promotion. It won't, it won't hurt the promotion for this fight. It's a big fight. And um, hopefully everything gets resolved and we, we see it. Just wanted to ask it. AJ's been very vocal on social media recently. All right. So you heard Eddie Hearn predict that Fury versus White won't do 1.5 million buys. He said it'll do more around 800, 900,000 pay per view buys because it's on BT Sport. But it would do more if it was on Sky Sports. Conspiracy G, man, what you got to say to all that? So. <clears throat> This is where I'm a little confused. So, like, uh, let's say, like, a cable package, right? Um, like, you know, like, in the States, like, when, when HBO had boxing, right? We had Showtime and we had HBO, right? I don't, I didn't think it really mattered which network it was on if there was going to be a pay-per-view fight. If you like the two fighters, you're going to pay whether it's Showtime or HBO. So, is BT not provided uh, in all the, the, the UK cable packages or something? That's a good question for uh, the UK fans. If you're if you're in the UK, let us know. Is it like, because I get what you're saying, G, but there's also ESPN, which comes with like every basic cable package you get in the US. And then you got to pay a little more if you want HBO. And then you have to pay more if you want Showtime. You yeah, have to pay so, for both. Yeah, so, so I'm saying it's BT, like one of those, like it's like uh like a premium, premium package where, it's kind of like our HBO, our stars or whatever, where you pay a little extra for the habit in your plan. Because then I'm like, if that's the case, then I could kind of see what um, Eddie Hearn is saying. But if everyone has BT, like, bro, who cares? Like the 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 network, you want to see Dillian, you want to see Tyson Fury, you're going to pay for that fight. So that's the only justification. But then again, I'm not in the UK, so I don't know how they do their, their cable uh, networks. You know what I mean? But that just seems so odd. Like, yeah, if it's on Sky, it's 1.5 million, but if it's on BT, it's only 800,000. I don't know. That's either sound like hate, or maybe Eddie is saying something that us in the states don't know about. All right, T B E, take it away. Uh, if we want to, do, I don't know. 1.5 is a big is is a bit much nowadays for boxes. A lot of them don't seem to gain that type. But this fight, I don't know. The promotion here in the States, I don't see I haven't seen much promotion. I haven't seen much like much speculation about it. But you know, over the UK, is is isn't this fight happening in the UK? Yeah. So if it's if he's talking about 1.5 American, no, no one close. He's not talking about 1.5 American. 1.5 right. overall, yeah, I think it could touch 1.5 because who doesn't want to see this fight? Oh, who doesn't want to see Fury fight White back in the UK? I think that's a big, big fight for them. It may not do the numbers. What's up? Oh, and also, uh, not to cut you off, but just to add that um, Amir Khan, um, Kel Brook fight. They're saying it made like around eight hundred thousand pay per view buys, and that's Amir Khan, Kel Brook. So Tyson Fury and Dillian White past their primes. That's that exactly old heads too. You know what I'm saying? Past their primes, making that type of numbers. So I'm pretty sure Tyson Fury and Dillian White could definitely surpass one million pay per view buys. Yeah. So if that's the case, then maybe. But who knows? Like boxing is very cherished out in the UK and overseas. So maybe maybe it does what it does. But if they if they if they refer here in the states, nah. But 
overseas in London. It's gonna it's gonna do it's gonna do high numbers, but it's not gonna generate the money it would if it had more American viewers. I'm gonna say this, like for me, <clears throat> if you're Eddie Hearn, don't you you want this fight to sell? I mean, you got Dillian White, that's a part of it. Now, I know the argument that people have been making, which makes me laugh, like it's a cringeworthy argument, is, oh, the interim's supposed to get a certain percentage and Bob Arum petitioned the WBC so that the split can be 80-20 so Dillian White can't make any more money. So why should he care about the pay-per-view sales? I'm going to tell you why. Because if he wins and the fight does well, he gets to argue that he fought on a card. He was the headliner of a card. He was victorious on a card that sold X amount of pay-per-view buys. Now, just imagine Fury versus White does 1.5 million pay-per-view buys, as Frank Warren is hoping. And Dillian White wins. Dillian White gets to now say, I fought on a card that did 1.5 million pay-per-view buys, and I won. He gets to now argue he is a superstar Mm -hmm. based on those numbers. It's not about whether or not he's getting a bigger piece of the pot. It's about the fact that his name is still on the fight. It's about the fact that the more this fight sells, the more people who watch it, the more people get to see him. How can you excuse the man not showing up? One. So the, so if 2 million people buy this fight and Dillian White wins, that means 2 million people just saw him defeat Tyson Fury, which would make him a superstar. Let's say him not showing up cost 300,000 people not, not purchasing the fight because now – Three hundred dollar people who three thousand three hundred thousand people who were iffy about buying this fight now feel like it ain't even going to happen. He won't. He didn't show up to the press conference. He's not going to show up to the fight. So now they're no longer interested in this fight. That's three hundred thousand people who won't see him win if he does do that. So he does hurt himself in the long run. The second issue with that argument is in the history of boxing, they've always adjusted the split so that fighters can get what they're accustomed to making. Most recently, Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford. Normally, the challenger for the WBO title gets a 20% split. It's normally 80-20 in favor of the champion. But after reviewing what the fighters made for their most most recent fights, the WBO adjusted the split from 80-20 to 60-40. 60 for TC, 40 for Sean Porter. Because they determined it would be unfair to Sean Porter to make him take 20% based on what he normally makes and what he normally generates and his status within the sport. So now you look at Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. You look at what Tyson Fury made in his last few fights. It doesn't matter what you think about his opponent. What matters is what he made. Again, what he made versus what Dillian White made. It doesn't matter about pandemic. and I don't want to hear any of that. All I know is what you fought for. You agreed to fight for X amount of dollars. It's what you got paid. So they adjusted the split to 80-20, which paid Tyson Fury what he normally made. I'm sorry, Kate. Why is that making that face, bro? Oh <laughs> well, my bad. That's just on my face. I'm like, <laughs> like, you feeling Katie's words that much, bro? You know I'm, just, I'm just. I got Ned's feeling. Hey, <laughs> don't, let, don't mess with Ned feeling the words, all right? Don't you? Don't you? If Ned's feeling, let Ned feel what he's feeling. My bad. I'm sorry. Let Ned you feel know, what he feel when he feel what he's feeling, brother. I'm sorry, Ned, that he interrupted. You know what I mean? Let you let you get back to. So, anyways, giving Fury 80% paid him what he was normally making in his last two fights. And giving Dill- Dillian White 20% gave him more than he ever made in his entire career. 
That's not my opinion. Those are the facts. So one, don't come at me unless you come in with a fact. I don't care about the past fights, what he ever, no. He's making more than he's ever made. Fury's making around what he normally made. Oh, yeah, and just for ish and giggles, there's an additional $4 million incentive around, right, that if, if Dillian White wins, he can get that. So why is all this important? It troubles me that Eddie Hearn, a promoter for one of the fighters in the fight, is downplaying the possibility of the sales. That's troubling to me. That's not troubling to you. Dillian White is fighting in this fight. And instead of saying, oh, it's possible it can do 1.5 million, he's like, oh, no, not on BT Sports, not on this. So what it tells me is it's more about him and his business endeavors than it is about Dillian. What are you saying about Dillian? If it was Anthony Joshua, this dude, first of all, if it was Anthony Joshua, his bid would have been a lot higher than it was for Dillian. That's what y'all aren't seeing. If it was Anthony Joshua, that bid would have been a lot higher. There's no way they let Anthony Joshua fight on BT Sports. You know that, and I know that. But for Dillian White, uh, we'll bid enough to make it look good, but we know we're not going to beat them. And then we'll hope that their fight doesn't do well. See, this is what I'm talking about for everybody. And then the hypocrisy in everyone. Everyone's a bunch of hypocrites. Can you imagine if uh, Anthony Joshua was about to fight an opponent and Eddie Hearn petitioned to the sanctioning body and got Anthony Joshua more money by changing the split to 80-20? Oh, people would be, people would be, oh, Eddie's a genius. He's the greatest promoter. He got, he got Anthony Joshua more money. Soon as Bob Arum does it, soon as Frank Warren does it to Dillian White, Oh, they're suckers. They cheated Dillian out of money. Nah, they being great promoters. Keep that same energy. When Eddie Hearn does something like that, all of y'all, all y'all hop up on him like, oh, he's so great. Once they do it, y'all want to sit there and act funny. <laughs> yeah, you said they'd be hopping up on him. I was like, pause. You know what I wanted to say, but I was left it alone. <laughs> but that I that was intended purposely. Eddie Hearn does something. Oh my, everything Eddie Hearn does, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Can you, but be realistic. If Eddie Hearn got AJ a 80-20 split from a from a 45-55 uh, split, you and I both know that people would be screaming his praises. He's the greatest promoter in the game. Look at how he looked out for AJ. Soon as Bob Arum and Frank Warren do it for Tyson Fury, somehow they're wrong. Somehow they cheated the game when all they did was get Tyson Fury, what he's accustomed to, and Dillian White, his biggest payday ever. Seems like smart business moves to me. Seems like true business operation to me. But no, somehow Dillian White was wrong. Man, please spare me. All right, and I'm going to close with this. Eddie, you got to find better material because that, that line may work with people who are already basing their points and arguments off of fallacies, right? But I know this. Tyson Fury did show up to the press conference for Vladimir Klitschko fight, the first fight. He showed up to all the press conferences, and he won. So you're right. There was no impact on the fight sales because Tyson Fury showed up. For the rematch, Tyson Fury did not show up to a press conference, and that fight never happened. So you can't switch history to try to make a point. No, no, no. You got to tell the truth. Fury versus uh, Vladimir Klitschko wasn't impacted because Tyson Fury showed up. Unlike your boy Dillian White, who's not showing up for this. So you can't say that just like when Fury didn't impact. Nah, because it's not the same scenario. Okay? So I'm saying this. It's troubling to me. That, one, you didn't bid more to outbid Frank Warren and Bob Arum when I know you would have done it for Anthony Joshua. And it's troubling to me that you're predicting a fight that involves your fighter, Dillian White, won't sell $1.5 million because of the network it's on. Mm. When a fight that's involving Dillian White, when I know you wouldn't say the same thing about Anthony Joshua. I've been saying this for the longest time. Yo, they do not treat Dillian White 
the way they treat Anthony Joshua. Yeah, and once again, time. huh? He's exactly. Uh, the step and once time. again, you see it. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and don't forget you can check our podcast out on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros.